Hi, thank you. Um, well, when I think about life experience, I think about uh, a lot about other animal species, because if we compare our senses with other animal species, us humans can't really sense much. For example, uh, dolphins can uh, hear through bone conduction, so they can hear under the water. Sharks can sense the magnetic north, so they can feel where the north is. There's many species that can sense infrared and ultraviolets. There's many species that can see at night. So when I look at uh, how we could extend our perception of reality, I think not about science fiction, but about uh, nature and about other animal species that have senses that we don't have. Uh, in 2003, I was interested in extending my senses. I didn't want to use technology, and I didn't want to wear technology to extend my senses. I wanted to become technology so that I could have a new sensory organ that would allow me to extend my perception of reality. I wanted to extend my perception of color, because color is something that, uh, it, it was always a part of my life, because I was colorblind, so I wanted to extend my perception of color, but not only the visual spectrum, but go beyond the visual spectrum, like sensing infrareds and ultraviolets. So the aim was to create something, a new sense that would allow me to perceive the visual spectrum and the invisible spectrum. So we thought about creating a, a new sensory input, so it would be, instead of seeing color, if I could hear color, then I would be able to go beyond the visual spectrum. So we created a scale that uh, transposes light frequencies to sound frequencies so that then instead of seeing color, you can hear the light frequency. So each color has its own light frequency. Uh, red is a uh, low frequency, violet is a high frequency. And then this is how color would sound like if we could hear it. So it's uh, different microtones for each uh, hue of the color wheel. So the aim was to create this uh, chip that would transform the colors into sounds. And then once we created this, I didn't want to use my ears to hear color because I'm already using my ears to hear things. So I wanted to have a new input. So then I thought of having a, a new organ that would allow me to hear color. Instead of using the ears, I would use bone conduction. So the aim was to create, uh, in this case, an antenna that would allow me to hear colors uh, through bone conduction. So we can hear through our ears, but we could also hear through bone conduction by having vibrations inside the skull. So the aim at the beginning was to um, design an antenna for a human. I looked at the different types there was, and I thought about having a, the cetaceous type of antenna so that I would be able to sense colors behind me, in front of me, so it would give me 360 degree perception of color. And then once the design was done, um, the issue was finding someone that would uh, allow me to have it implanted. So I had different uh, designs at the beginning. So I call these exosensors that they were permanently attached from the outside. And then once the final design of the antenna was done, I had to find a doctor that would be willing to drill my head and implant the antenna. So I went to the doctor and I said, I wanted uh, this antenna implant. He said, sorry, we don't do antenna implants. You'll have to either <laughs> convince a bioethical committee or you won't be able to do it. So I uh, presented the surgery to a a committee of bioethics, and they said no, that uh, implanting an antenna to a human is not ethical, because it's a new organ, and usually doctors only regenerate pre-existing body parts. This is a new body part, so this is one of the no's. Also, it's a new sense, it goes beyond the visual spectrum, so that's not ethical for doctors, yet they, it's ethical to regenerate pre-existing senses, but to create a new sense is not ethical. And also, they were wor very worried about the image the hospital would have if someone came out with an antenna sticking out of the head. So that was really what really concerned them. So they said no, but then they told me that maybe I could find some doctor willing to do it underground. So then I found a doctor that was willing to do it. So now if anyone wants to have cyborg surgeries, there's a network of doctors willing to do cyborg surgery in the same way that in the 1950s and 60s there was a network of doctors willing to do transgender surgeries. Now there's doctors willing to do cyborg surgery, which is like trans-species uh, surgeries. And then I found this one in Barcelona. So we did the surgery, basically my head was, uh, we reduced some hair, we reduced the skin, and then my head was drilled four times. This is me facing down. So uh, 
because because of the bioethic uh, not being there, we actually added a fourth implant, which is internet connection, which then allows me also to receive colors from other parts of the world. So I don't need to only perceive colors through the antenna. People can send colors to my head from other places now. So it's four implants, two for the antenna, one for the chip that vibrates, depending on the colors around me, and the fourth one is internet connection, so I can receive colors from from external devices or other parts of the world. The surgery took three hours, then it was all closed, and then the antenna and the bone took two months to merge. So now the antenna is part of my skeleton, it's a part of my body, and I had to get used to different things, like my, I'm officially taller now, so I had to get used to the new height. It's waterproof, I can shower. Many people ask if, if I can, so it's waterproof. and. Um, yeah, just uh, little things, also getting used to the new sense, like the, the fact that I hear color constantly since 2004 is something that I had to get used to it. Internet connection is very useful for me because then I no longer need to sense the colors around me. I can have a, an eye in each continent. There's five friends of mine that have permission to send colors to my head any time of the day or night, so they can use their mobile phone to stream live images from the, from the world to my head. So if there's a beautiful sunset in Australia, my friend from Melbourne can actually stream live images of the sunset, and I could be here but sensing a, a sunset. So uh, I feel I have an eye in each continent. If they send colors at night, then they influence my dreams. So if someone starts sending violet colors at night, and I wake up and I realize that I dreamt of violet people and violet houses, that's because someone was sending me violet colors at night. So my friends can actually color my dreams or can influence my dreams by sending colors at night. So I'm using the internet as a sense. I think that's the future of the internet, is that we'll start using the, the internet as a sensory extension or as a sense itself. So um, my life has changed because my brain has changed. Now I have a new sense. It's a, the sonochromatic sense. This is an MRI scan of my brain. I feel no difference between the software and my brain, so that's why I feel cyborg. Cyborg is the union between cybernetics and organism. I identify myself as a cyborg and as a trans species, someone that has added senses and organs that other species have, and someone who's designing what species want, he wants to be. So we can all actually decide what species we want to become. Now we can add senses and organs that other species have or that no species have, and design what type of species you want to become. So this is part of it, and I had an issue with the UK government talking about this in 2004 because they didn't allow me to uh, appear in my passport with the uh, antenna because there's a law that says electronic equipment is not allowed in passport photos. So I said that this is not an electronic equipment, this is a body part, and I told them that I felt cyborg, and then in the end they allowed me. So in the, in the first passport in 2004, I appeared with the first antenna prototypes, and this allowed me to travel because it's, it's quite difficult in airports because they don't like technology usually, <laughs> so they don't like me, so it's, it's a bit complicated. But this helps me travel. If I show it, this is part of my official image, then they have to permit, uh, they have to allow me go through. Um, yes. So um, I'm now actually applying for Swedish citizenship because uh, the material inside my head is Swedish. So I'm Swedish. I'm telling them that uh, I should be allowed to apply for Swedish citizenship. They still haven't replied, but uh, I think. <laughs> One, one of the reasons why you should be allowed to become Swedish is there's, there's a point missing. I think that if you have a body part that is Swedish, you should also be entitled to apply for Swedish citizenship. So I'm, I'm now having, uh, trying to have a conversation with the Swedish government. So if you ever have a new body part that belongs to another country and you have it for at least a period of seven or eight years, I think you should be also uh, allowed to apply for nationality of that country. Um, is it work? Yes. So my life has changed in many ways. Before I would dress in a way that it would look good, but now I dress in a way that it sounds good because I can decide which notes I want to wear because each color has a note. So I can decide if I want to wear C major, for example, which would be a, this combination, that's, that's a happy combination, or I can be, uh, wear minor chords like this. I would res, dress like this in a funeral, for example, because it's a sad, sad combination. Or you can also uh, dress in a song, depending on the color combination, you can wear specific melodies. And that's what Cardona will talk about in a moment. Also ties, you can wear a melody and a tie. So if I want to wear a song, I can transpose it to a tie and then I listen to the tie and then I hear music. So the longer the tie, the longer the melody. And also food has changed because now I can compose music with food. Depending on how I put the food on a plate, 
I can actually eat songs and I'm collaborating with a restaurant where you can actually go there and ask for specific songs on the menu and then they're served on a plate that rotates and then you can hear the sound of the food. So you can eat some Lady Gaga salads or some Justin Bieber desserts so you can decide which songs you want to eat. So now I can compose music by looking at things. The fact that I hear colors means that uh, wherever I look, I hear notes. So if I have different colors in front of me, I can compose music. These are called color concerts where I amplify the sounds in my head to the audience. And then um, it's music created through color. My experience of walking around the supermarket has changed a lot because it's extremely uh, musical. Supermarkets are like nightclubs to me because there's a lot of music especially the aisles with cleaning products. That's the most exciting area of any supermarket because there's a lot of uh, unexpected colors. They're very saturated. So uh, I really like just walking around supermarkets and trying to find little melodies uh, around the different supermarkets. So, yeah. Milk is silent. So for example, <laughs> so white elements are silent, black elements as well. So if there's no hue, there's no sound. Also, art has changed. I can now listen to a Picasso. I can listen to an Andy Warhol. All painters have become composers to me. So it's a musical experience. I can hear the scream. And each painter sounds different. You can easily distinguish a Warhol from a, a Goya. Warhol is usually very loud because it's very saturated. So you can hear an Andy Warhol from the other end of the museum usually because it's very saturated. Also, the way I sense people has changed because when I look at someone, I can hear the colors of their face. So each face sounds different. I, I like doing sound portraits where I write down the notes of people's face and then I send them an MP3 of their face. The first one I did was of Prince Charles. I asked him if I could listen to his face and this was his reaction when I asked him. <laughs> so uh, each person sounds different. Like Judy Dench has silent hair. Um, is it's uh, almost uh, completely white. James Cameron has a very high-pitched sound of skin. It's a shade of uh, pink that is very high-pitched. Al Gore has different notes in his eyes because it's different shades of turquoise. Uh, Marina Abramo is completely silent except her lips, which are very, very low and very loud. So uh, Steve Wozniak's eyes sound like green apples, uh, very, very pure. Uh, Moby has uh, less notes because he has no hair, so he has uh, a bit less notes than most people. Um, Dan, uh, who's, uh, Robert De Niro, he has a melody in his lips. He had different types of shades of red, so I could listen to a melody in his lips. Woody Allen sounds very uns unsaturated, very soft, like an old painting. Uh, Macaulay Culkin sounds C major. It's unusual to find people that sound like a major chord. So he has a, a major chord, whereas Philip Glass sounds very microtonal, very much like his music. <laughs> and uh, Bono has very loud glasses. So he, this is... A... <laughs> uh, what really shocked me is that people who say they're black, they're not black. And people who say they're white, they're not white. People who say they're black, they're actually very, very dark orange. And people who say they're white, they're very, very light orange. So the fact that people say that we are black and white is completely false. We are all different shades of orange. <laughs> this is a, a, color, a color wheel based on skins. There's red orange and uh, yellow orange and then different shades of uh, light, but never black or white. You can also create music from people's faces. It's a face concert, so I get close to the face of the audience usually, and then I create melodies from the people's uh, colors. So if the concert sounds really bad, it's the audience's fault, because that's where the music comes from. The last face concert was of Prince Albert II of Monaco, and he liked his face so much that he's using it as his ringtone. So if someone calls him, he hears his face. Um, uh, I can also paint music now. So this is music transposed to a painting. This is Mozart's Queen of the Night, and this is Baby Baby by Justin Bieber. So each note <laughs> has been transposed to its colors. Um, yeah, so yeah, the social reaction is an, a very important part of becoming a cyborg. In my case, my new organ is very visible. Some people will become, news, new, will become cyborgs with uh, new organs that might not be as visible as an antenna, but me having an antenna since 2004, I've spoken to strangers every single day since March 22nd, 2004. In 2004, people thought it was a light. They thought I, w I, I was really interested in uh, uh, reading light, so they thought, they asked me if I could, uh, if I could turn it on. 2005, six people thought it was a microphone that I, from chatting, internet chat. 2006, 2007, people started to think it was a hands-free telephone, like taxi drivers started to have hands-free telephones. In 2008, 9, people thought it was a GoPro, that I was filming my life. 
In 2010, 11, people thought it was something to do with uh, Google Glass, that something was coming uh, like Google Glass. 2013, 14, people, children started to ask me if it was some kind of extendable selfie stick. And, uh, <laughs> and the latest thing is just a few months, uh, is people uh, just point at me and say uh, that I'm a Pokemon, uh, and that I can poke. <laughs> so they try to catch me. So it keeps changing. Hopefully in the 2020s, people will just think it's an antenna, uh, an, a new sensory organ. Yeah, we'll have the questions later. So sorry. So, you, um, so in 2010, I created the Cyber Foundation with uh, Moon Rivas with the aim to extend other people's senses to anyone that wants to become a cyborg, they can contact the Cyber Foundation and we'll help them develop the new sensory organs or the new sense. Some of the projects we've done is uh, internal rather, so you can sense the speed in which people are walking in front of you. So by having earrings that vibrate, you can feel the exact speed of people walking in front of you. You can also feel movement without having to open your eyes. It's very simple earrings that are pierced in your uh, ear, ear and then you feel the vibrations. Also, if you turn them around, you can have retroception, sensing what's behind you. This is a sense that we give to many machines, like cars. Cars can sense if there's presence behind them. We can sense if there's presence behind us. So with simple um, earrings like this, it allows you to sense if there's something or someone behind you. So it gives you retroception. Also, um, we developed the, uh, the seismoception. So Moon Rivas has an implant in her arm that allows her to feel earthquakes. So whenever there's an earthquake in the world, she feels a vibration in her body. So she's constantly feeling these vibrations because there's earthquakes every five or two or 10 minutes. So she feels she has two heartbeats now, her own and the heartbeat of the earth. She also uses this in art so she can express herself artistically through this new sense. And her aim now is to also to have uh, the sense of uh, feeling the moonquakes because there's also moonquakes uh, that uh, exist so that she would be able to feel if there's any uh, seismic activity in the moon. My aim is also space. I'm using the internet connection as well to uh, connect to NASA's International Space Station so that I, I can sense the colors from outer space. When I connect, I can perceive lots of ultraviolet, so I'm using the internet to explore space. So instead of becoming an astronaut, you can also become a sensetronaut. You can sense your, send your senses to space and then feel space without having to physically go there. In, in, in an age where in the future we'll be able to 3D print our DNA, we might be able to 3D print ourselves in other planets and then connect to these second bodies through the internet and then feel that we are in other planets and explore, explore space without physically traveling there. So this might be the beginning of exploring this connection with space by using the internet. CyborgNest is a company that is now offering sensors to people, like the sense that is being offered now is the North Sense. It's a small chip that can be implanted here in the middle of your chest, and then whenever you face north, you feel the north, so it gives you a sense of orientation. If you have this for several months, you won't feel the vibration anymore, and you'll feel the orientation, so it will give you a sense of uh, orientation. So when you go out the subway, instead of looking at the streets, you'll know where the north is, because you'll feel the north. This is a sense that uh, many species have. Also, uh, uh, something I'm developing in, in Brazil this year is a small tooth with a light, so it gives you bioluminescence. There's animals that can create light in total darkness. We can't, we need to use artificial light. So it's a small tooth. We already did it, but there were some issues with it. It's a small tooth that when you click, you have emergency light inside. But I had a problem when I had it fitted that when I was eating, the light was going on and off all the time. <laughs> so now we're trying to create one that doesn't do that. Also, in the other side, I have another space for another tooth that will allow me to control the antenna. So I'll be able to move the antenna left, right, up and down by controlling it through my tooth. It will actually be uh, controlled through Bluetooth. So it will be a Bluetooth tooth that will allow me <laughs> to control my antenna. Uh, the last sense that I'm developing now is the, the sense of time with, uh, in, in ThoughtWorks here in New York. The aim is to have a, a new sensory organ for the sense of time. There's no species with a sensory organ for time. So this will be probably the first time that we create an organ that will allow you to control your perception of time, basically. So it's, it's going to be a, a crown inside between the skin and the bone that will go around. It will feel different heat. Uh, and it will take 24 hours for the heat to go around the head. So automatically, when you have it inside, you'll know the exact time by feeling the heat around your head. But the question is whether or not, if you have this for several months, it might become a perception of time. So then, if you control the speed in which it moves, you'll feel that time goes faster or slower. So you'll be able to control the perception of time and also travel in time. Because if you turn it around several times, you'll feel that you're going back or forward 
in time. So it's taking Einstein's relativity uh, theory of time into an organ and to, into practice. So this will be, uh, the first prototype will be ready this year and we'll see what happens. So um, now that I talked a bit about becoming a new species, I think the next stage is well, when you become technology is that you'll need clothes adapted to these uh, new bodies and new senses. That's why I started collaborating with Frances Cardona, fashion designer from Barcelona, to create cyborg couture uh, for future bodies. So I think. Hi, my name is Cardona and I'm cyborg fashion designer. I really like wearable technology, but I'm more interested in becoming technology. So I feel I'm part of the post wearable generation. So H plus C, our brand, is creating clothes adapted to the new organs or the new senses. And we are creating clothes that you can feel and perceive through the new senses. So uh, the first part of our collection is uh, clothes adapted to people who have an antenna, as you know, Neil. Yeah, I have certain issues. I, I don't have hats or hoodies. Uh, I can't, there's no holes in them. So he's designing a set of hoodies and hats that will have holes for people who might in the 2020s have antennas, or in my case, uh, I already have issues not being able to wear caps. Yeah, it's so simple. So uh, the other part is sonochromatic part. Um, it's music in colors in the clothes. So you can, with a new sense as the sonochromatic sense, you can perceive a song or music is through the colors. So now Moon, Moon Rivas is, is going to move her implant to her sensory organ to the feet. So we are creating a pair of shoes that... Um, yeah, they will avoid touching the, the top of her feet. So they'll be like diagonal, right? Yes. So it's a pair of shoes that will be uh, like a triangle so that she will be able to feel earthquakes and not get confused by the, um, the shoe and an earthquake. So it will give her some space. So um, the north part of the collection for the north sense, uh, it's clothes that uh, make it easier to charge yourself because with the north sense you have to charge yourself. So you can open the clothes and it will have uh, holes in the armpit too if you don't want to open the clothes, the door. Yeah, so you'll be able to charge yourself by ex ex with a cable under your armpit, so it will be more discreet, or you can open the door in the middle of the T-shirt, so you can actually also show your north sense, but also you can implant yourself opening the door or using the armpit holes. Yeah. Uh, the chrono sense, the sense of time, uh, we are creating a headband that keep the temperature and protect you from water because the time will be perceived through temperature. Point, yeah, temperature, points of heat. As Yeah, so it will be like a, a, a band, but it will be circular, and then this should protect from sun or from strong temperature changes. And the, uh, This one is a personal project because uh, I want to become cyborg. I want to feel magnetoception, and magnetoception is the perception of magnetic fields through magnetic hair implanted. So now I cannot become cyborg because my parents don't allow me. I'm only 16. <laughs> so I have to wait till I'm 18 to become cyborg. <laughs> and H plus C are creating clothes adapted to magnetic hair, I will have uh, uh, magnetic uh, gloves glove to brush my hair without touching it. So um, we are creating two... The shoulder, the shoulder sho pads as well? Yeah, shoulder pads with magnets to, to stabilize, st stabilize hair. my hair. Or Otherwise his yeah. hair might just go crazy. In a, if, you, if he goes to an electro-domestic shop, his hair will go yeah, uh, completely Yeah, or Times Square too. <laughs> Times Square as well, yes. <laughs> I will be like, oh my God. So the, uh, the, the shoulder pads will st stabilize his hair and then also his gloves will allow him to comb his hair without touching his hair. And 
and then uh, we have created retroception clothes that are bidimensional clothes that because with retroception you don't need to walk uh, forwards. forwards you can walk backwards uh, it's not visual just visual bidimensional it's comfortable bidimensional clothes yeah it's clothes that it's comfortable to walk backwards or forwards and it's also 3d printed as it's a mixture of 3d print and silk so it's both sides uh onesie that is double-sided yes and the 8th of october we will have our first catwalk cyber catwalk in the queen's museum new york and we are you are all invited if you want to come. Yes, please join us on the 8th of October at the Queen's Museum for the Cyborg Couture Show. There'll be 10 cyborgs uh, wearing uh, post-wearable clothes. So it's clothes adapted to people who are technology and uh, we'll see what happens. So you can follow us. This is recent, it's, there's no, uh, yeah, you can follow us and we'll say the exact time. We still don't know the time. So? That's all, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Really very thank much. you. <laughs> I don't know if there's, can we do Q&A or not? Yeah. No?